Hi, so now what we're going to do is revisit the Bible passage. I want you to see where it is. Okay. All right. That's Exodus. I wasn't using that one. This is a good one, but I wasn't using it. Um, the one I was using was BLB. This is easier for beginners to use. You have to configure these apps. Okay. It's running a little slower than it would because it's being recorded. All right, this is where we left off. Matthew 24, 1. And what I had told you was that in the Greek, it's 40 syllables. And that the time period referenced is 30 AD when Jesus talks, says this passage, when this passage actually occurs, and 70 AD when the temple dies. Now, if you'd seen me cover this the first time in the longer video, you know why I say that. But if you haven't seen it, let me just give you a quick understanding. Bible Beater has definite rules that the Bible itself codifies. The trick for us, because we were not taught this as we should have been, because all the kids in Israel learn this like their ABCs. If we had been taught this the way they were, we would know that at the beginning of every section, the author is going to dateline, tell you when, what he's writing occurs and when he writes it. And he uses a very specific set of rules when he does that. Basically, and I, you're supposed to be able to see this when I touch it. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Um, the Greek here is metered in sets of seven. When the meter is first divisible by seven, it's telling you when the text is written and when it occurs. Okay? So that's how I know. It's 30 AD. Okay? But I don't want to get too complicated here. But the way the text tells you that, okay, is through the Greek, not the English, and you have to use the actual original text, which the meter helps you prove, okay? This is Matthew, the original text. The link is in the video description, so you can see it yourself, okay? So the first time the text sevens is in the third line, which is the beginning of verse 2. Where in Greek it says, Hodapokrites epin autois, which in English translated, you know, nicely. And answering them, he said, Okay? Apokrites isn't just, it doesn't just mean the answer. It means to give a pronouncement, an official pronouncement as an answer. So, by the time that clause ends, the number is 49. So, you are to relate the text of what he says, when he says it, to something that happened in the past versus that date, 49 years prior. Well, he's talking to the disciples in 30 A.D. The text 
makes that clear. He dies two weeks later in the text. Okay? So what was 49 years before 30 AD? It was 19 BC. And what was important related to the text of him, get this, coming out of the temple? What was important about that event in 30 AD relative to 19 BC? See, it's teaching you a lesson. It's not just numbers or hocus pocus. It's telling you how to understand the text. Well, 49 years prior to 30 BC was when Herod started to rebuild the temple Jesus is walking out of. Now, the Romans and the Greeks didn't have computers. They didn't have the kind of entertainment we have today. What they had were words and the cleverness of the words you used, leaving a lot unsaid. The better entertainment value you provided. They would pay up to a million dollars for very clever writing. Well, this is a very clever writing because Jesus is the temple the temple depicts. He's walking out of the temple that depicts him and the meter that's used for the clause when he first talks dates back to back to when Herod started to rebuild the temple. So now you have this kind of ironic, biting, satirical story of a secular king who pretended to be a Jew. He was not a Jew. He was an Arab. He usurped the Jewish royal house. So you have a usurper king in 19 BC trying to rebuild the temple that depicts Christ, the real king of Israel, who Herod usurped. He usurped the whole Davidic line. It's a very long story. It goes back to 140 BC. Now, if you're Jewish, you know all this. The minute you see that 49, it is that familiar to you. Because what people did to entertain themselves while they walked to Jerusalem, which would take a couple of days, maybe six days, they would tell each other stories. Okay, of their people, of their literature, of their past, of the Bible. And they spend all day and all night on this material. So it was part of the warp and woof of their thought pattern. Okay, in many ways, the problem we have with Bible is it is too familiar. So when we look at the words in English, Jesus left the temple, it doesn't mean anything to us. We don't stop to analyze why those words are what they are. Okay? That's what's really wrong with Christianity, is that we are so familiar with the words of the Bible, we don't know what it says. Okay? But the ancient, the ancient Jews and Greeks had that problem too, but they spent all day and all night on the text. So they would see the 49 and immediately see the parallel between the real king of the Jews and the fake king of the Jews who started to restore, restore the temple depicting the future Messiah, king of the Jews, to come as a parallel. And of course, Jesus is leaving. The temple is leaving the temple. He's going to die.
for the sins of the world. All of that drama goes unsaid because everybody knows this story by the time Matthew writes it, even in 30 AD. It was as famous a story as anything about Trump today. Half of us talk about little snippets about Trump in the past. We don't bother to elaborate. Oh, Michael Cohen, you know, said this. Nobody defines who Michael Cohen is, because everybody already knows. Nobody stops to talk about Michael Cohen's relationship to Trump, because everybody already knows. The same thing with this 40, this 49 right here. Everybody already knows. All of this is in just the first frickin' verse and the first clause of the second verse of the Bible. And we don't know any of it. Okay? So, back to this. Jesus left the temple and was walking away. He's leaving the temple. The people don't want him, so he's leaving. He's walking away because they don't want him. What do they want? They want the pretty building. The disciples, his own freaking disciples, his disciples come up to him. Oh, crap. His disciples come up to him, and do they talk to him? about his teaching? Oh no, they're talking about the frickin' building. What building? Last word in Greek here. Yeru, temple. Tu Yeru, the temple. Three syllables, last three years. That was the takedown of the temple began in its last three years. It ended at April on Passover, literally on Passover, Titus took it down. And it started three years prior. Do you see how specific, how droll, how satirical, how ironic this one Bible verse is covering A.D. 30 to 70, how it tells you everything about how people were thinking? Christ, the King of the Jews, paying for our sins, leaves the temple that depicts him, because nobody wants him, a temple which a fake King Herod started to rebuild 49 years prior. And 49 is a very pregnant number in Judaism, because that's the amount of time the first temple was down until the second temple started to be re Built, that's Daniel 9. That's the date line he uses is 49. So Matthew reminds you of Daniel 9 by using 49 at the beginning of verse 2. You see how much meaning is in this text? And we gloss over it every Sunday. Do you see how much God loves you? Because in order for me to tell you what I told you, God had to preserve the Greek and the history, the history of everything that happened between 30 and 70. Humans would have to have access to this history so they could know the meter, look at the verse and understand what God is saying. If he didn't preserve the meter, we not know, because we have not known for 1,500 frickin' years. 
if he did not preserve the history all this time about Herod, about Jesus, about the disciples, about Israel, about the world, we would not get this meaning from this verse. Do you see how you can see the face of God just in this verse alone? Use 1 John 1 9 and talk to God about this because it gets even more delicious from here on out. Now, how do I turn this off? <laughs>